Hello, you're watching the news from Bahrain International with Samar Ajawi. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa issued Decree 17 for the year 2023, amending Article 1 of Decree 61 for the year 2021, establishing the General Authority for Sports based on a proposal by the Prime Minister and after the approval of the Cabinet. The decree stipulates that the Minister's definition contained in Article 1 of Decree number 61 for the year 2021, establishing the General Sports Authority, shall be replaced with the following definition. The Minister concerned with youth affairs. His Majesty also issued Decree 18 for the year 2023, appointing Sheikh Hamey bint Mohammed bin Khalifa Al Khalifa as Chief Executive Officer of the National Center for Financial Intelligence at the Ministry of the Interior. His Majesty also issued Decree 19 for the year 2023, appointing Dua Sultan Mohammed Salman as Deputy Chief Executive of the Statistics and Population Registry at the Information and E-Government Authority. His Majesty the King also issued Decree 2023, appointing Dr. Lulwa Rashid Shwetar as Chief Executive Officer of the Primary Healthcare Centers. His Majesty also issued Decree 21 for the year 2023, appointing Dr. Ijlal Faisal Ali Al Alawi as Assistant Under Secretary for Public Health at the Ministry of Health. And His Majesty the King issued Decree 2022 for the year 2023, appointing Nabil Saleh Abdul Al as a member of the Future Generation Reserve Board, replacing Tariq Ahmed Al Samahiji. <coughs> His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Prime Minister and Chairman of the Economic Development Board, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa received the President of Hungary, Katalin Novak, at the ADB's headquarters in Bahrain Bay. His Royal Highness welcomed Prime Minister Novak and the accompanying delegation to Bahrain, commending the bilateral relations and their continuous growth. He affirmed the Kingdom's commitment to strengthening cooperation and coordination with Hungary, highlighting the importance of further developing the bilateral ties to achieve joint aspirations which benefit the people of both countries. His Royal Highness and Novak witnessed the signing of a number of agreements and memorandums of understanding in the fields of infrastructure and oil which will help create quality opportunities for citizens and contribute to strengthening Bahrain-Hungary economic integration. The meeting also served as an opportunity to explore investment opportunities and areas of cooperation between Bahrain and Hungary. The President was briefed on Bahrain's investment opportunities, its business-friendly environment and the major development projects. She also presented with EDB's investment promotion strategies in various vital sectors and the services it provides to investors, as well as the efforts made by the Kingdom to diversify its economic base. A number of senior officials from both countries also attended the meeting.
In implementation of the Royal Directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to provide urgent humanitarian relief aid to brotherly and friendly countries affected by the earthquake that struck Syria and Turkey and under the auspices of representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Minister of Information in cooperation with the Royal Humanitarian Foundation organized a national campaign to support the earthquake victims in Syria and Turkey entitled Solidarity Day. On this occasion, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa extended gratitude to His Majesty the King, the Honorary President of the Royal Humanitarian Foundation for His Majesty's humanitarian initiatives towards the brother brothers in Syria and Turkey, and for His Majesty's relief for the afflicted and extending a helping hand to brothers and friends in various countries of the world. His Highness said that the campaign reflects the firm stance of the Kingdom of Bahrain, the leadership, government and people towards brotherly and friendly peoples in crises and humanitarian conditions, and His Majesty the King's keenness to provide aid and assistance and extend a helping hand to the needy. His Honor Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa underlined great support that the Royal Humanitarian Foundation received from the government headed by His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, affirming that the Kingdom of Bahrain stands by the two brotherly people in their humanitarian ordeal that afflicted them as a result of the devastating earthquake. His Highness pointed out that the Royal Foundation's keenness to provide permanent assistance for building people and the land which has continuity in benefit and human development. His Highness also urged young people to contribute to charitable and humanitarian work because of its positive impact on the country and society. His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa directed institutions, companies, citizens and residents to contribute to this noble humanitarian work, to provide relief to the afflicted in their ordeal and to extend a helping hand to them to contribute to alleviating their suffering. The Secretary General of the Royal Humanitarian Foundation and Chief Executive Officer of the National Committee for Supporting Earthquake Victims in Syria and Turkey, Dr. Mustafa Sayyid, extended gratitude to His Majesty the King, the Honorary President of the Royal Humanitarian Foundation, for His Majesty's continued humanitarian initiatives in helping brothers and friends relief for the afflicted, appreciating the support that the Royal Humanitarian Foundation enjoys from the government headed by His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. He also extended his sincere thanks and appreciation to His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa for his support and guidance in forming the National Committee for Supporting Earthquake Victims in Syria and Turkey. Within the framework of the preparations for His Majesty the King's Endurance Cup Festival, representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Works and Youth Affairs, Honorary President of the Royal Equestrian and Endurance Federation, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, followed the junior and youth and the private stables race for a distance of 120 kilometers held in the Bahrain International Endurance Village. His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa followed the stages of the race and encouraged the riders throughout these stages. His Highness affirmed that the outstanding performance of the riders affirmed the progress march of endurance sports in local competitions and the upcoming races of the festival will also be more exciting. His Highness Sheikh Nasser indicated that the young and young riders race contributes to the achieving many goals by creating the ideal atmosphere for them. His Highness congratulated the winners in the junior and youth race and the private stables race, noting that this victory will be an incentive for all the riders in the upcoming races. The President of the Royal Equestrian and Endurance Federation, His Highness Sheikh Isa, Bin Abdullah Al Khalifa crowned the winners as victorious team rider Isa Al Anzi was placed first in the junior and youth race, while Naif Al Blushi from the Az Zaama stable was placed first in the private stables race for a distance of 120 kilometers.
Under the patronage of the President of the Supreme Council for Health, Lieutenant General Dr. Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, the renovated Abdullah Kano Pediatric Oncology Unit was inaugurated at the Salmania Medical Complex. The government's hospital reopened the revamped facility in cooperation with the SMILE Initiative, a Bahrain Future Society for Youth program that provides psychosocial support to children with cancer and their parents in Bahrain. The opening ceremony was also attended by Government Hospitals Board of Trustees. Chairman Sheikh Hisham bin Abdulaziz Al Khalifa, the Chief Executive Officer, Dr. Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Ansari, the Bahrain Future Society for Youth Program Chairperson Sabah Abdurrahman Al Zayani, and other officials. The unit was completely renovated with the support of the SMILE Initiative, which allocated the proceeds of its annual awareness campaign, Our Children Are Like Gold, which it held in its 8th and 9th editions during the year 2021-2022 for the benefit of this project. This included redesigning the rooms and the reception desk, building an additional room for consultations and providing spaces, children's entertainment and redesign and equip the daily treatment room. Lieutenant General Dr. Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa praised the prominent role played by the civil institutions in promoting humanitarian charitable work and backing government efforts in providing support and assistance to the patients. He stressed the importance of cooperation with civil society institutions to play their humanitarian role through their various programs to care for patients in general and cancer patients in particular. The support that aims to enhance the health of children. The public prosecution celebrated 20 years of achievements at a ceremony attended by the Vice President of the Supreme Judicial Council and President of the Court of Cassation, Sheikh Khalid bin Ali Al Khalifa. Also present were the Minister of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowments, Nawaf Al Ma'auda, the Minister of Social Development, Osama Al Asfour, the Minister of Information, Ramzan Al Naimi, and public figures. In his speech, the Attorney General, Dr. Ali Al Bouanin, highlighted the constitutional and legal status of the public prosecution as a pillar of the justice system in Bahrain. The establishment of the public prosecution was an outcome of the National Action Charter, supported by the people and launched by His Majesty the King. He added that the public prosecution is also a defender of the interests and capabilities of the state that are protected by law and is an essential partner and factor in achieving stability and security. We are proud that we are here today to celebrate the judicial effort that lasted 20 years. The public prosecution has fulfilled its legal and international uh, and social responsibilities to protect human rights and freedoms in according with law and international agreements. I would like to take the opportunity in this honorable ceremony to give my sincere thanks and gratefulness to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and to His Excellency Dr. Ali bin Fadl Al Bouainain, the Attorney General. That is along with the highest levels of congratulations on the 20th year of the establishment of the public prosecution. I also extend my sincere thanks and appreciation to all members of the public prosecution and for the efforts being made to develop the judicial work and judicial services and for their willingness on the following the rule of laws and their respect towards the international conventions which reflect our beloved kingdom's culture and contribute the achievements of justice. The Chief Executive Officer of Government Hospitals, Ahmed Mohammed Al Ansari, affirmed that the Operations Department of the Salmania Medical Complex performed 1,758 surgeries during January as part of the implementation mechanism of the plan to reduce the waiting list. Dr. Al Ansari said that the operations included 14 medical specialities in the Salmania Medical Complex, noting the continuation of the government hospitals and adopting strategies to develop services in all the government hospitals especially in the Salmania Medical Complex, compared to 1,571 surgeries in December 2022. The Chief Executive Officer of Government Hospitals praised the efforts of all health caters in the Operations Department of the Salmania Medical Complex, who contributed to serving a larger number of patients and reducing waiting lists. 
The Education and Training Quality Authority has issued package 47 of reports on the results of the reviews of the performance of vocational education and training institutions and the processes of the National Qualifications Framework. The authority emphasized the adoption of transparency and professionalism in issuing its report, which contributes positively and effectively to developing the work of educational and training institutions in the Kingdom of Bahrain and ensuring the quality of their performance. These services allow the educational and training entities, students and parents, to search and view schools review reports, higher education and vocational review reports, in addition to national examination reports and results. The Bahrain Fintech and Cryptocurrency Conference concluded hosting the world's leading activists in the field of financial services to share their knowledge and vision for the future of the industry. In addition, companies from different countries of the world presented their vision of their latest financial technology solutions and the latest trends and developments in the cryptocurrency industry. Experts from 20 countries, including the United States, the European Union, and the United Kingdom participated in the summit. The Kingdom of Bahrain seeks to be the regional center for cryptocurrency and financial technology in the Middle East. Alexei Popperin booked his berth into the men's singles quarterfinals of the Ministry of Interior Tennis Challenger, part of the ATP Challenger Tour being held at the Public Security Officers Club in Glebia. The Australian recovered from an early stumble to beat his Norwegian opponent, Viktor Drasovic, in their dramatic last 16-round match on Thursday. Jason Kubler completed the Aussie's joy by reaching the quarterfinals thanks to his well-deserved win over his Polish opponent, Daniel Michalski. The fourth day of the tournament also witnessed exciting matches on the last 16 in the men's doubles event. Romain Arnido of Poland teamed up with Sam Weisborn of Austria to beat the pair of Viktor Drosovic and Otto Vertanen of Finland to secure their place in the quarterfinals. Finland's Patrick Niklas Salminen and his teammate Bart Stevens of the Netherlands followed suit, defeating Maximilian Nukarist and Kaichi Oshida of Japan to reach the competition's final eight. Roman Jibavi of Czech Republic and Johnny Omara of Great Britain teamed up to register as well, earned victory over Yan Su Young Chang of South Korea and Mark Jenjol of the Czech Republic. I think it was more just uh, I kind of got used to the to the conditions. Um, he was playing really, really well in that first set. He, I don't think he missed many balls, and he was really feeling comfortable out there. So I tried to to make him as uncomfortable as I could with the shots that I had to that I produced. Kind of was mixing up the pace, changing the the height of the ball, um, and it, and it worked out. Um, I think the conditions were pretty tough today. It was uh, more windy than yesterday, but uh, we we managed it very well and uh, got the win. So that's the main thing for us. I mean, we've been playing for a couple of weeks to months now, um, and so far we're playing very good. I like to have him next to me. Um, he was serving great again today and like hitting some good returns. So yeah, very happy to get through. Yes, of course, I enjoyed already because I have been for the first edition I was here. I enjoyed it a lot and as soon as I see the challenger again on the calendar, I will try to come again. You pick up the balls from the tennis players and you give them the balls and sometimes you hold up the umbrellas for the tennis players. This thing has been amazing, it's really well done, everything is always clean and um, organized. Saudi Arabia's Crown Prince, His Royal Highness Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud announced the launch of the new Murabba Development Company, which aims to develop the world's largest modern downtown in Riyadh. The new Murabba project will be built around the concept of sustainability, featuring green areas and walking and cycling paths that will enhance the quality of life by promoting healthy, active lifestyles and community activities. It will also create an iconic museum a technology and design university, a multi-purpose immersive theater, and more than 80 entertainment and culture venues. The project will be situated at the intersection of King Salman and King Khalid Roads to the north west of Riyadh, over an area of 19 square kilometers to accommodate hundreds of thousands of residents. The project will offer more than 25 million square meters 
of floor area featuring more than 104,000 residential units, 9,000 hotel rooms, and more than 980,000 square meter of retail space, as well as 1.4 million square meters of office space, 620,000 square meters of leisure assets, and 1.8 million square meters of space dedicated to community facilities. The company will also develop the project and build the Mukab, an exceptional iconic landmark featuring the latest innovative technologies.